Hey, babe, it's Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back to my channel. Now let's get into the couple's retreat. Ray J continuing to walk off. Mike, as well as Raymond, go over there to have a conversation with Ray J. And Ray J is still pissed because he feels like Prinky is bringing up this divorce situation and she's continuing to lie about how it all got started. Meanwhile, Princess is still back with AJ, crying her eyes out, saying that she still just wants her family. She wants to have a family. And AJ tells her, well, you guys can, you know, co-parent. Sometimes people are better apart and better as parents than they are together. Now, Ray J decides to go and go back to the ranch, but Princess decides to stay and continue to kind of make herself look like a fool because she's the only person out there while her mate is back at the hotel or wherever. So they're about to play this game called Stuck. AJ is going to bring up a category. If the category applies to you, then stay. If it doesn't apply to you, then move forward. The first thing was called lack of romance. We noticed that Delicious feels as though they have a lack of romance in their relationship, but Raymond feels like, that's not a problem over here with me. Insecurity comes up. Yandy feels like, yeah, there is insecurity. I think that Mendeecees is very insecure based on how he's acted while he was in prison for the past five years. Yes, Mendeecees feels like, nah, I'm good on that end. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Now, infidelity as well as mistrust comes up. And what do we see? Rashida still stuck on the infidelity and the mistrust, but for some reason, Kirk feels like that ain't got nothing to do with me. I've moved past that. I hope that you can too. I'm good. I find that to be very funny that Kirk would continue to move forward as if that's not something that is continuing to affect them today. I'm pretty, pretty sure that it is. And because it was so public and the way that it humiliated Miss Rashida so much, um, I'm just surprised that he would just act as though that's not an issue like i'm sure that's still an issue in y'all marriage so the next day we see delicious and yandy have a sit down while mendeecees and raymond have a sit down now with delicious and yandy we learned that with both of their men being previously locked up they still deal with some type of trauma that's going on within them like mendeecees does this jump or something every time he sleeps but delicious says that her man does it while he's awake so it's interesting to see that both of them have some type of trauma going on from the from being in prison and how it's actually affecting their relationship now mendeecee speaks on what bothered him while he was locked up he said he got a lot of mail from a lot of people but at one point he wasn't getting anything from yandy but he would see her post and do all this stuff on social media but she didn't have time to like send him an email or something so that bothered him for sure and he said that he carried some type of resentment uh, towards her but I mean if that happened at the first part of him being in prison then the rest of the sentence I'm sure she had been available to him so I wonder why he carries so much issue with that particular time versus the overall range of her being there and we learned that later on he kept telling her like you know you don't have to be here if you don't want to be here you don't have to be here if you don't want to be here like I don't want to do that to you yet you're telling her one thing but then you're showing something different you're telling her you don't have to hang around. I know this could be tough, but at the same time, if you think that she's moving on, it's a problem for you and you don't like that she's not reaching out when she's not doing certain things that you want her to do. You want it to continue to have control over her while she's out um, in the world and you're locked up, which I do believe that's where a lot of the insecurity came. He built that insecurity on his own because he already was implanting that in his own head that, you know, you don't got to do this. You don't, you don't have to do that. You know, that was his insecurity showing right there. Like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to hang around if you don't want to. He already assumed the worst that she was going to leave him because that's his history. That's what his mama has done. So I think he was just trying to mentally prepare himself for that. And he probably just was thinking that he wasn't worthy of her love while he was being locked up. You know, although she had just married him right before him going off to prison and she's the mother of his two kids and continued to take care of his older son while he was away. So um, that's just like, you know, very interesting and very contradictory to his actions. Raymond agrees and says that, you know, he's been at that place before where he's felt like that. But he says delicious has taught him so much about life and just living in the moment and just constantly working towards pushing past that place of where he's been as far as being in prison and working on his trauma and of course Mendeecee sits back and he agrees with him on that too he was like yeah that's true Yandy does do that but when she do it it kind of make me feel like I'm a I'm a child or something and I don't really like that so I have to remind myself like yo calm down chill out and allow her to show you and teach you new things like it's okay 
because now she's trying to merge you back into her world. I mean, man, DC's literally just got out of prison, what, in 2020, early 2020, then we went into this pandemic. So I think it's a lot he has to learn and even more that he's likely going to have to learn as we come out of this pandemic. So Ray J wants to have a sit down with AJ. They go sit down. He wants to tell her how he feels as though Prinky hasn't uh, told the story right as it pertains to the divorce. She actually initiated the divorce first. Then she withdrew it and then I submitted it. And I'm with AJ. AJ said, I don't give up. I don't care who started what. That's not the issue here. Y'all two are both here now. Y'all are trying to work on having a better relationship in, effort, in an effort to keep your marriage. So let's focus on that and having the proper communication amongst each other and doing right by each other. All that other shit you're talking about, it don't matter who initiated it. The thing is, it happened. So let's work on fixing that and moving forward. AJ goes on to talk about how he feel like, well, I feel like my wife is trying to sabotage me. You know, I feel like it's more than that. She's trying to sabotage me. AJ says, then why are you with her? Ray J stands up. He wants to shake her hand and say, you're right. You're right. Let me go. She was like, no, what are you doing? We need to have a conversation. He was like, no, there's nothing to talk about. You've already said everything that I needed to hear. I told you she's trying to sabotage me. You asked me why am I with her? I say, that's a great question. Let me move on. Now I know what I need to do. She says, no, can we at least assess this and have a two-way street? Let's have a conversation. Let's sit down. Okay, he tells her, fine, he sits down and then proceeds to tell her as she's questioning him, I feel like I am being drilled by princess now. AJ says, oh, really? Is that what it is? He says, yes. Yeah. She said, is it that you feel as though you're being drilled by princess or is it that you don't want to hear the truth? In this moment, Ray J completely shuts down. He pulls out their phone, start looking at his phone, completely disregarding anything AJ is talking about. And then from that moment, he, he said, I'm sorry, are you saying something? very fucking rude doing something to aj that he would not want somebody else to do to his mama and then he gets up and he walks off and it's funny to hear princess lay out the story from beginning to end as to how the conversation went south between aj and ray j because she wasn't even there and she laid it out plain and simple but here's the thing for ray j right Number one, you're just disrespectful. No, you don't want to hear the truth. You getting up and having a disregard for what other people have to say as if the only thing that matters is what you have to say is just not fair at all. And for you to be an adult and a father now, you're just showing that you are so incapable of having adult conversations. And it's slick. It's like, well, whatever Prinky do to you, you deserve because you have a disregard for her feelings. You don't want to talk about anything. He even went on to say that he don't even like therapists because they be one-sided. No, you just want a man corner you just want a person to always agree with you and i'm not saying ray j isn't right about some of the things that he says about uh princess he probably is right but maybe he doesn't know how to word it correctly to get people to see his point or something i'm not sure but you can't always get up and run from the situation and it's and it's so crazy when you see people run from situations y'all ever notice you're going to be seeing those same situations again. Whenever you don't deal with something, they're going to continue to show up in your life. Y'all never notice that? Every time you get up and you run away from something, he has run away from so many conversations only for those conversations to circle back around. And the reason they're circling back around is because he doesn't listen, he doesn't take heed, and he doesn't fix with action. So if you don't have that knowledge of what you're doing wrong and how you can fix it, you're going to continue to do the same over and over. And that's what's happening. And he and Princess are going nowhere fast. They get ready to do this group project. Uh, AJ tells them about the conversation with she and Ray J and how he left. She also gives everybody the opportunity to leave if they want. Princess said, I'll go ahead and leave because I don't think it's fair that I continue to do these exercises by myself. AJ respects it. She lets her go. The group exercise is each couple will sit in this chair. AJ is going to bring up a situation and they're going to address the situation by speaking directly to each other. So Kirk and Rashida go up first. And I feel like I kind of learned some interesting stuff that I did not know before. So she speaks on intimacy and how they're lacking intimacy within their relationship. And Kirk says that we're stuck. Like, you know, that's where we are. This is where we are. And Rashida takes it like, wow, so you feel like you just stuck with me because that's where we at. So if you don't want to be here, then why are you here is what she's thinking. But we also go on to dig a bit deeper into the infidelity and how everything happened. Because honestly, Kirk don't want to talk about that. And if we're going to talk about that, Kirk is like, let's talk about everything. Okay, it wasn't just me. We were at an odd place within our marriage. We weren't having sex. A lot of things weren't happening. And so that's one of the reasons why I dipped out. Was he right? No. 
But we did learn that Rashida was saying that after she had their son Carter, she went through a lot of postpartum depression to a point where she really didn't even want to deal with him. She didn't want to have sex with him. We tried to touch her. She kind of cringed. Like she just wasn't at that physical place with him. And I feel like it makes sense, not only just the postpartum depression, but when Rashida got pregnant with that baby, Kirk didn't even believe the child was his. He had the ultimate audacity to question his wife when he was just caught out here hanging out with Bambi and doing what he doing out here in these streets. He was caught out here doing his thing and then now your wife gets pregnant and you want to question that. He was so busy being in the streets that he didn't think he was around his wife enough to get her pregnant. So she had to deal with the stress of that as she go through her entire pregnancy. It was a complete surprise to her. I don't think Rashida had on any, any plans on having any more kids. I think she was just good. And then here it is, baby Carter pops up. She decides to keep the baby. Then she gives birth to the baby. She's just trying to figure out her life. So I think it was a combination of a lot of things that was happening with Rashida at the time due to Kirk. Only for him to go back out there and then cheat on her again. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that was ultimate trash. And I think that Kirk needs to look at the overall situation as well. Although he's saying we were at a bad place in our marriage. So I went out and I cheated. She wasn't doing what she needed to do as a wife. But again, I, Rashida, I don't remember her mentioning this. But Rashida, you got to go back to when and how he made you feel when you got pregnant with that baby it was televised he made you feel silly as hell he didn't even believe the child was yours he put you through a lot of shi you know and then you have to have this child and then you're going into postpartum and then other shi that's going on so i feel like so i feel like kirk needs to take a step back and look at everything i feel like you were the cause in the beginning to be on some whole shit okay and you're the cause on the back end as well to be a part of some hoe shit so it's like take accountability for yourself and then y'all figure out how y'all gonna move forward from here so when it comes to michael and rada we learned that they were friends with benefits for some time and then they actually merged into a relationship now he was very clear with her about a hey, i want to have other women that i mess around with on the side from here or there you know from time to time and she was kind of cool with it because he said from time to time she was okay with it fine we could do that but it ended up going from time to time to every single time. So whenever she was around, he would always have other women. And he goes on to say, but you also enjoyed me smashing other women. You like to see that. That's something that you wanted to see. You wanted to see me do all of that. So don't just make it seem like it was on me when this is what you wanted too. But then he also goes on to say that he thinks that she only agreed to that to loop him in only for her to change her mind later on. And that could very well be the case. A lot of women go along with whatever just to get the man in the beginning. And then at knowing that that's not what they really want, but if that's going to help them get the man, they go along with it. And then over time, when they try to show what it is they really want, the man isn't rocking with that because he's comfortable and content with what you've already agreed to in the beginning. And now you want to switch it up. I don't really see it working out between Michael and Rada. I think Michael is incapable of giving her what it is that she wants. He even said at the beginning when we they were wearing things and um, he even said at the beginning when they had dinner and he put on that cheetah outfit. He said, yeah, he said, I can't stop being a cheetah. Apparently, that's what I continue to do. And that's the reason why he wants to have an open relationship because if they close the relationship, he's still going to be who he is and he doesn't want it to be considered cheating. And Rada, I loved how AJ said, what do you want like be honest say what it is that you want and she wants like a real relationship she wants a relationship with substance she doesn't want him always being able to smash women all the time or whatever like that's cool she enjoys that but not a, on a constant basis is what she's saying so i can appreciate aj asking her that so she got to get to the root of that and stop going along just to get along if that's not what it is that you want and she also let us know that she been left him a while ago but she only came back when she learned about this opportunity of, the, of them being on couples retreat and being able to actually get some real therapy so that's the only reason why she opened up changed her mind and she came back into the picture so with yin yin and dc's i kind of already mentioned this you know their situation was insecurities mendici feels like there are none and yandy says no there are definitely some i'm just now hearing about this whole email situation where you had an issue with me emailing you um when i wasn't and she says that's unfair because i called you every day like i talked to you every single day and he felt like she was lying he was like girl we don't even get that many minutes for you to talk to me every day i don't know what you talking about honey that's what he said i don't know how true it was but he also goes on to say that he felt like she always knew 
he would be there. She already knew where he was and she felt he felt like she put him on a shelf so she can go and pick him up and play with him whenever she wanted to. And I kind of feel like he wanted Yandy to be as low as him when he was in prison. But again, being contradictory because he's like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to be this. You don't have to da 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 da, da. But they're still trying to make her feel guilty for wanting to live her life. That's your sentence. That's what you did. This is your, you're locked up. You know, um, I want to still be able to enjoy some part of my life on the outside i'm gonna you know reach out to you give you some of the attention that you need but like come on i'm still holding it down i'm still holding down the fort okay i'm still taking care of your mama taking care of these kids taking care of these businesses we got i got a lot going on too so i just felt like he wanted her to kind of be in the gutter with him but then on the flip side saying that you know you don't have to and i think that was just him trying to mentally prepare himself for if she decides to leave him so he could be okay but that's not what he really wanted at the same time. So confusing to me, just confusing. So the question comes up that Yandy asked me, DC, he's like, yo, if the roles were reversed, if I had to go to prison or whatever, like, are you going to hold it down for me? He said, I don't know. And that really hurt her feelings because so many people told her, like, girl, you holding on to this man while he locked up. Will he do it for you? And she would always say, yes, he would. We love each other. We got married. Like, absolutely. We here for each other. That's what he'll do. Only to hear that that's not necessarily how that would have went he may not have hung in there with her and i believe he absolutely would not hang in there with you he may be in there rocking with you like yeah this still my girl or whatever but i believe he would have continued to fuck off for sure everybody can't be a papoose everybody cannot be a papoose so i think mendeces would have continued to go back into the ponds of the baby mamas and he would have messed with both of those ladies and um yeah and, and probably messed with somebody else he probably would have continued to send money to Yandy and, and look out for her, but I don't know if he would have really held the fort down all the way and made sure that they were a family when she got out of prison. I don't really see that. I don't see that at all. So all that, that I don't know, whatever, mm -mm. the answer is no. Okay, that's what that is. But, you know, overall, it was a pretty cute episode, but that's all I have for Couples Retreat. You guys leave your thoughts and comments down below. I'm Jamie, that's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. Follow me on Instagram as well as Twitter at Jamie, that's me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.